back here at Borio's on 8891 McDonald's Parkway in Cicero, New York, for another live show with Adrian Autry of Syracuse Orange Men's Basketball, an alum and a coach, and of course me here with you, sportscaster, sports writer for Dance Tour Broadcast Media. And the name is in there, so I don't have to make that too hard on myself. But <laughs> want to welcome you back. Beautiful weather. You can see the blue sky behind us. Music out here on the patio. Borio's not only great food, but a great atmosphere. And you can't beat the weather that Syracuse has been having. So we're happy to be out here. And I'm actually going to take a back seat in the beginning because Adrian has some questions for me. So I'm going to I'm going to be the answeree, so to speak. So. Go ahead. Well, glad to be back again, like Dan talked about. And uh, since the last time we broadcasted live from Warriors, things have changed in Dan's life. He's added a new member of his team. In that aspect, Dan got married over the break. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. That, you know, uh, okay. how was the wedding? Wedding was wedding was perfect. Wedding was great. We had it uh, had it out on Skinny Atlas uh, by Skinny Atlas out at the um, the lodge at Welch Allen, and we had the wedding at in Manly as at St Anne's. It was perfect. My guys were perfect. Everybody was great. My grandma, who's 97 years old, was there in attendance, and she danced with me because she promised she would. So, wedding, I couldn't ask for better with the wedding. And uh, the only thing I'm sad about is you missed out on all my moves. I, I was going to ask you, <laughs> what what dance did we do at the at the dance? I did everything, man. I, I just I just did whatever my body told me to do. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I don't think I was off the floor for more than like two minutes. So. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, the question that people want to know. Yeah. What was the song that you and your bri lovely bride chose to dance to? We chose So This Is Love from the, it's actually from Cinderella. So she's a big Disney fan, so am I. And uh, we chose, it's a really short song, very sweet. But we did So This Is Love, and, and during the song, my grandmother has no filter at 97. <laughs> so she, uh, she said in the middle of it, we were just dancing normal, and she said, do something. So Kate doesn't like to be dipped, so I told her to dip me, and I got I got pretty far down uh, toward the ground, and then so my grandma appreciated that. But yeah, we had we had a little uh, little Disney feel to the wedding. You get major props for that because I don't know if I can remember the, the full exact title of my <laughs> song, but we won't let my wife know. That. Right. But anyway, that was uh, that was what I wanted to ask you. Uh, and I'm glad and congratulations and Thank welcome you. to the club. Thank you. And uh, it's an awesome experience. So I want to go back in time for, for you before we go anywhere else with this. How long have you been married? I've been married 10 years now. 10 years. So a decade of marriage. What what advice do you have for me? What advice I have for yeah. you? <laughs> I'm going to ask you that. You know what? Choose your battles. Choose your battles. It's always going to be disagreements. Just choose the ones that you choose to disagree on it sometimes sometimes you gotta bite your tongue and just let it go what what would your wife say about you a decade into being married to you what would she say oh, I, don't, I don't think we can have that uh, uh, on it that would be like a I don't know what kind of show that would be probably uh, like an HBO special or something <laughs> no I don't hard know. Knocks for basketball. no I don't know I probably the thing is I, I probably made a travel more than she expected uh, just as far as the pursuit of me uh, getting into the coaching profession and us changing a couple of times, you know, start from high school to college and now to Syracuse. So probably, you know, just to travel. I don't think she expected to move around that much uh, so early. Um, a basketball wife, though, how difficult is that, that at any given time, I mean, you could... Let's say you get a better job offer. Let's say one day you get a head coaching offer and, and you go. How difficult is it to come home and have that conversation? You know, it's it's, it's difficult and exciting at the same time. Uh, a lot of times, especially uh, you know, being an assistant coach, I think every assistant coach, you know, its goal is to become a head coach and run his own program. And I think the wife, right. you know, they understand that and they know that that's the goal. So when you do come home with that conversation, I think it's a happy side. Uh, a discussion that to, to have because you build friends and you, you get you know you get embedded into a community and you know this is the way of life and now up and change and uproot it's always kind of exciting and a little scary just because of the unknown but I think that's a conversation that you know we we hopefully look forward to having <laughs> and and 
in in that she's made so many sacrifices. I'm sure your wife has, and you know, as you said, traveling and all different things you've had to do. What sacrifices do you make on your end when you know you're kind of driving the bus, so to speak, when you end up somewhere else? How do you kind of give back, so to speak? I think you know you just really try to you know in my profession. I think is I think most coaches will say you try to support them as much as possible right. uh, because you are away and they do uh, a, a lot of the grunt work. Um, and you travel and things like that. So I think you just try to give them the most support that you could possibly give them and, and try to make their lives a little bit easier whenever you can. You know, whenever you get, you know, a day off or two days off, if you're allowed to stay home and just tell her to go do what she needs to do and, <laughs> and things like that. So I think, you know, it's just really trying to support her. How often are you with the kids taking them out and doing something? I mean, do you try to have dad time where mom can just relax? I try to. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always work that way because we don't have time together as well. So we have more family time than anything as far as that. But right now, once the season's over with and things kind of calm down after you hit that little cool period, you know, now I'm the, the AAU dad. You know, I drive the boat. My boat. I got two boys. I drive them around to their tournaments, and I love it. I get up. I'm excited. You know, to spend some time with them and watch them get a chance to play. Is it difficult for you as a dad to sit in the stands and watch your sons without being a coach? Absolutely. It's the hardest thing to do. I, I, and I fail miserably, especially with my older son. Um, but uh, you just want him to, you know, you just want them to do the best, be the best. But, you know, the one thing about that is when you watch your kids, it gives you a, a different, you know, aspect of, you know, development and, and things like that. It actually helps me. When I start to go back and work with our guys, certain things I may see them, you know, do or not do well, yeah. that's something I may want to address in my next skill development session or something like that. Are you harder on your sons than you are on your Syracuse guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and uh, because, you know, they, they grow up in it. And sometimes I forget that they are kids too, and they, they do the PlayStation and they they, <laughs> yeah. they get into it all. But you know, I try to, I try to push them because I think sometimes when you when you're a coach's son, coaches already uh, anticipate that they know more than they they should. And sometimes that's not the case, you know. So sometimes they don't get pushed as much, and so therefore I, I have to push them a little bit. Are you are you the yelling dad in the stands, or can you lock it up? Like if they're playing the game, oh yeah. Are you a yeller? Or are you quiet? I'm quiet. I'm quiet, but my face and my body, I may be moving and jerking some of those, you know, Coach Behar moves <laughs> like that. But uh, I, I, I try not to. I, I try not to say nothing. I try not to say nothing at all during the game. After the game. You know, once the game's over with, you know, on our way home, we'll, we'll talk about the game. Now, you brought up something with, with Coach Beheim. He may not say much, but he is known for gestures, very strange gestures. Do they, is there any significant ones that have come to mean something to you when you see them? The little hand movements? Is there anything that you that you can define that you see? Well, well you got the hand movement, that means go. <laughs> and then you got the... I, sometimes it's not like a when it, when he wants to get the crowd going. It's like a yeah. I don't know. It's like a like a, almost like a bird laughing <laughs> a little bit, like a little quick short one. Yeah. And then he kind of does his shoulder, and then I say, oh, he wants the crowd to get into the game. You know, oh, we need a big stop. You know. When he's sitting there in silence with the with the hand like this, you know, where it looks like at times he's just done or falling asleep or something. What is that? What is that one to you? You know, that's him. He is, I always say Coach Beheim is a genius when it comes to the feel of the game, the flow of the game, and how things are working. I think, you know, in those moments, he's just, you know, really kind of just thinking about probably his next move or how the game is going and what happened in that last, you know, just, it's, it's a multitude of things that can be going through his mind, but he's really locked into the game and just kind of, you know, really probably, I always say, what's the next move or, or, di or different scenarios or things like that. Uh, he's always thinking. He's never not thinking, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, he, and, and, he's, and, he, and it's so fast and it's so quick. Uh, he's just, uh, he's amazing when it comes to those things. And sometimes, you know, coaching is, 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 is not saying 
saying something sometimes. It's just maybe just kind of seeing what the guys are going to do, how they're going to talk, and how they're going to respond to it. You know, that's not the case with him, but sometimes, you know, I think, you know, him thinking, that gives the guys a chance to kind of have their own input. When so many people on the outside always heard, you know, how involved is Coach Bam? It doesn't look like he says anything, doesn't look like he cares. I've been at practice. I know that's not true. I know that he breaks things down. He'll talk to players individually. Even, and it's interesting that he can talk so low, but everybody stops and listens to this very low voice. When you hear people say, you know, that he's not involved and he's not, is that the craziest thing to you because he has so much involvement? And obviously you know it, but I've I've seen how involved he gets into the intricate pieces that people don't usually see when they're watching a game. Well, I think Coach is a, is a man of few words, but when he speaks, it's, it's, uh, it's profound, it's, it's, it's dead spot on. I don't think, I think sometimes a lot of people speak from a reaction or emotionally, he takes all of that stuff out and, and gets right to the point. And I think uh, that's a, you know, not a lot of people can do that. You know, uh, things, I think things that may be difficult for some people, or they come easy to him when, I, when it comes to coaching. And for people to say that he doesn't look involved and distant, or distant and, and, and say that he, you know, question that, that's a... Uh, that's far from, you know, what, like you said, what, what the truth is. He really, he's an intense guy, and he gets <laughs> after the guys, but I don't think he's a guy that, you know, I know he's not a coach that is always talking, feel the need to talk. I think, you know, the one thing about him, I think, you know, he allows his players at, at certain situations to play. To play, you know, to be a player, you know, it's just like if you're trying to study, you can't always have the teacher always in your ear or your ear, and you're trying to study. How can you do that? Yeah. And I think he, he has an unbelievable balance of, of, of being able to do that. Does he, if, if he was to call the wrong play or, or run something that he didn't like, have you ever heard him say, oh, that was my fault? No. <laughs> no, but I don't think he's ever called the wrong play. <laughs> there you go. That's a nice trick way to look at it. <laughs> we'll be back here at Borio's 8891 McDonald's Parkway in Cicero, New York. Adrian Autry of Syracuse Orange Men's Basketball, and I'm Dan Tatora of Dan Tatora Broadcast Media. You're watching on WakeUpCallDT.com and on YouTube.com backslash WakeUpCallDT, where sports meets life.